Hey everyone, Jonah here, aka Electropolitan, and this is going to be a tutorial on how to make stages for Super Smash Bros. Brawl or Project M. Now, the first thing you want to do is familiarize yourself with Brawl Crate. This is going to be used for stages, it's going to be used for a whole bunch of things uh, outside of stages, so you might as well just get it and learn it. Um, just mess around with it, just see you know, how stages are formatted, well, you know, what's where, and just, you know, read the values and... Yeah, so you, you know, let's check out the textures. Mess around with stuff. Um, right click arc, preview all models, view the whole stage. See, well, what's all this stuff? What are, what's this? WASD is to open this menu. You can see a whole bunch of stuff. You can see the bones over here. You see um, animations, objects, textures, um, you know, uh, <laughs> what do you call those things? Um, scaling and size, translation. Got play, whole bunch of stuff here. All different models and MDLOs, polygons, good view, vertices. Just familiarize yourself with the program. Just you know, kind of experiment, see what's what. Make backups just in case. <laughs> um, so yeah, so now I want you to think, um, what do you want to do exactly with your stage? Do you want to make a new stage? Do you want to edit a current stage? Has it been done before? So. I'll, Try and browse through the archives like Brawl Vault, maybe Game Banana. Um, check out uh, some old mod packs like Smash Infinite, Legacy XP. Whole bunch of stages there. You can, you know, tweak things, use stuff from one stage, make it into another stage. Check out Smash Forge and Game Banana for uh, like Smash Four and Smash Four and Smash Forge. You know, let me uh, clarify that. Melee. Whole bunch of mods out there. You can take stuff from anything and make stuff into new things. And think about what you want to do. Now, once you have that idea, how are you going to get those models? How are you going to get those textures? You could uh, get the game yourself, rip the textures, rip the models. It's a little tricky, but each system is going to be its own new thing to tackle. You could also go to the model resource or texture resource or sprite resource even. And see a whole bunch of stuff people have already ripped and uploaded and just, um, yeah, download that, view image, copy, paste, and tweak it. Make it fit for your stage. Now, Brawl is only going to accept DAE and MDLO files for models, 3D models. So these are all going to be OBJs, so you're going to have to convert that with 3ds Max or Blender or some other program. Um, sprites, sprites are very simple. Just a PNG, download that, save it as something, and you're good. <laughs> it's very, very simple. Um, let me think. There's a whole bunch of stuff to cover in this tutorial, as you can see by the, the length of it. So let me think for a sec. Um, so now that you have the stuff, um, pretty important thing to cover is the base stage. So this is going to be Battlefield, as you can see up here. They aren't all going to be named like this. Sometimes they'll be named other things, like um, you can rename it to anything you want. It doesn't matter what you name it. But for organizational purposes, um, it could be handy. You might, you'll probably see a lot of Battlefield or Final Destination or a lot of Politana. Politana is going to be Sky World. And a lot of people use that because that's the stage that can fit the most animations and have the most space in it so it can be like a four megabyte stage and it'll be totally fine other stages have more restrictions some are some can have water like jungle japes so some do have their niches some just aren't really used at all because they aren't very explored and whatnot but for the most part you're going to be dealing with final destination or uh, mirage saloon right here is i renamed this this was originally green hill and because of that it has the swinging platform now you could uh, translate this into final destination but there's not really a need to so that's that. For the most part, people are going to use uh, FD for that final destination. Um, now, let's say you want to import a texture. So um, I'm messing around here. I want to change. Uh, what do I want to change? Oh, yeah, another big thing is take a look at the size of the texture and all the formats. Yeah, so uh, formats are all different, sizes are very different. For the most part, every texture is going to be divisible by four. Uh, there are some exceptions, and depending on the file type and what you use it for, like uh, like these guys, I they aren't. Sometimes you get lucky and it just works out. Other times, I have a whole bunch of blank space here. It doesn't really matter. The file size is a little bigger, but um, you know, for my case, it's, it's very tiny. It doesn't really matter. But there are some cases where even if it's a small file size, like I use like four 1024 textures, and yeah, it was like too big or something. I don't know. Brawl just didn't want to play this age. But you're probably not going to run into that issue. So let's say 
Uh, BA1. I wanted to edit this texture. I wanted to remove this little dude here, which I'll do in game. For some reason, this is the only texture I've ever seen like this, where it's like upside down, but in game it's, well, I guess, upside down. <laughs> well, it's fine in game, but you know, it's gonna look like that. So this I wanted to remove this little dude. How do I do that? Secondly, I should mention um, the materials or the math, I believe they call them. So we can view here just with the arrow keys. Material, every material here. This is a very important texture. That this texture should be in every stage. This texture, um, it's a shadow texture. If, even if you don't use shadows, the game might not even load if you don't have that stage. So you can see the all this green here is, I believe, done in external uh, software like um, 3ds Max, Blender, maybe Maya. <laughs> I don't do much 3D modeling, so I don't deal with this very much. But for the most, I'm pretty sure you can't ch adjust these. So keep that in mind when you're making a texture. Think, you know, where the edges are and how they're used and whatnot. But if you're using sprites, very simple. You won't, it's not very really complicated. So I exported this guy. So I'm gonna open up paint.net. You could use GIMP, you could use Photoshop, whatever you want, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, paint.net and GIMP are free. So keep that in mind. So I want to get rid of that guy. So how about I do that? I could just, um, I could get something here and just paste it over with something. Um, very simple, like let's say, this is pretty tiny, but you know, I can copy that. I can make a new layer. And using the magic wand tool, I can easily select what I want to. Do that, make a new layer, get rid of all this. Oh, I missed a little spot there. A little hard to select a single pixel with that tool. You get the idea, whatever. Okay, I don't want to spend like all day on this. <laughs> Wait, oh, that's the wrong one. Dang it. But you know, I could get a texture from anything and put it wherever I want. I could flip that, of course. Um, I could do it up here. I could do it with this guy. Not that important. Well, let's say I wanted to remove it and I just, just wanted the wall. So I'm going to try and select like pixel perfect um, that exact little section I'll just go up a little just get a good chunk of this wall and copy that you know control C paste it new layer just in case and I can just paste right over it try to line it up vertically um, hmm. Is that it right there? Might be it, yeah. So then I can just go in here and remove some of this. That's perfect. Now I'm kind of rushing here. Uh, I probably wouldn't do this so sloppily, but just for the sake of showing you how you would do something like that, it would be like that. Let's say the texture was a little complicated. That, is, that looks pretty good actually. Not perfect. I would go back and do that, but that looks pretty good. So let's say I wanted that. I could just do file save or save as. I want it as a PNG. I'll be a one, two. I probably shouldn't have actually called it that. <laughs> it's gonna get pretty confusing. I'll just I'll call it something else. With uh, F2, I'll use V. I, I, I'll name all, all the shortcuts. Shortcuts are very important, especially if you're doing a lot of modding. You want to go fast as possible and use as little clicks as possible because your fingers are gonna be like in a lot of pain. I'm gonna do Control R, replace this. I'm gonna do that. And there you go, now it's removed. View it in game, preview models, well, not in game, but you know, preview it in Brawl Crate, and there it is, not there anymore. It looks pretty good. Use control and view it from the side. The shift is a little faster, and otherwise it'd be like this. So yeah, not bad. Okay, now let's say I wanted to import a model. Um, how do I do that? Or let's say I wanted to import something from another stage. So, um, let's say I wanted to export Let's say I wanted, uh, yeah, I wanted this block here. I wanted that in Battlefield. I wanted to make like a, I don't know, let's say I wanted like a Green Hill Zone, but with the sunset of Battlefield. So I would export this. That'd be the model, the MDLO. MDLO. Now, uh, for the most part, textures are gonna be in the texture section down here, but sometimes you are gonna see textures up here in the model section. 
people to do that. I don't see many people do it nowadays, but people do that, oddly enough. Um, so let's say here, you file import model, and come on, main stage. And it's all blank, it's all white. Now why is that? That's because there's no textures associated with it. So if I went to materials, I got the shadow, but I don't have any of these. Let's go down here to textures. Oh, let's do that. I think it was what, BA1, 2, and black. Yeah. BA1. Oh, well, okay. Maybe not that one. BA2 and black. Let's go down here to textures. Import textures. Uh, yes, I wanted that. CMPR, that's right. CMPR, that's right. CMPR. Sometimes it's going to be off. It'll say like CI8 or something else. If the transparency, it might say one of these. But for the most part, you want CMPR. Not always. But I'm going to rename this one Control N. Uh, so it matches. What I could also do is let's say VV, let's say. I could go up here. Like that's going to be wrong, but everyone that thinks that's going to be right, I could just go in here and change it to here. And I could do that with anything. Um, Let's say I wanted like some crazy texture like brick. That would probably look terrible on that block, but you know, let's say. <laughs> Is it the right size? Might be. Yeah, it's okay. So now I should look fine in game. All right, this great, fantastic block here. And yeah, looks pretty good. <clears throat> now, when importing stage um, assets into another stage, the shaders might be off. So let's go into that. That'll be scene data. And so yeah. This is where lighting and fog is controlled. And depending on the values, uh, actually it's lining up fairly well. A little weird with the lighting, don't know what's that. But sometimes a stage is gonna be, if you import one stage into another stage, it's like it'll just go crazy. It'll be like pure black or pure white or something's gonna be super off. So if that did happen, what would you do? You would go to materials, see kind of what's doing it. And yeah, it would be right here. Uh, scene O references. And you can see here, um, this index, blah, 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 light set, interesting applied, and negative one if unused. Now we're okay here, but uh, you know everything could be different. Maybe set everything to zero, maybe set everything to negative one, set everything to one, mess around with different stuff, see what the models or the materials that are working in the actual stage, see what they're doing. They have like, so it looks like, yeah, for the most part, yeah, zero, zero, then negative one. Some exceptions with fog, as you see. Also, if you want to adjust some specific colors, like let's say um, this little blue thing up here, this little uh, ball. This does not have a texture associated with it. There's very few models that are going to do that, but if there was, oh boy. Um, so this is a leftover from Green Hill Zone, and there's a whole bunch of stuff here, and there's, yeah, uh, there's one of these. One of these. Oh god, there's so many. Might be one of these. It's gonna be something like this. Once you do find it, I should know that, but there's so much to go through right now. And you can just pick any color you want. Oh, it'd be great if I could do it on camera. You know, on stream. May have been that one. So let's say I wanted it to be red. Still not red. But it will be like that. Oh man, there's too many to pick to look through. Cloud. I want to be cloud. You get the idea. <laughs> but that is how you would change it. Is this one maybe? Might be that one. Say so I wanted some crazy ugly color. No, it's not that one. It's gonna be one of these. Whatever. You get the idea. I'm not gonna spend like 30 minutes on this. But that is how you change the color of, let's say, the ball up here. Very few things are going to do that, but if you do want to change the color of some material that isn't related to the textures, it would be through there. Now, um, okay, did that. There's a whole bunch of notes I have on the side. <laughs> Give me a second. There's a lot to cover here, as you see. Also, from other stages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, another big one. <clears throat> so, um, now, uh, how do I explain this? Um, okay, here. So what we see here is not necessarily what we're going to see in game. WASD, open up that. Remove collisions, remove all that. Okay, let's say, I mean, I'll do this one here. 
So these are going to be the values here. So let's say um, you're going to see some stages, older stages like this. Let's say it looked like this in Brawl Crate. It's not going to look like this in game. That is what it's going to look like in game because that's the uh, model animation. Even if this model isn't animated, uh, like frame one, it is going to be here and it is always going to be here. So, or zero. I think, yeah. Maybe not. It's so a frame one, it's going to be there. Um, now, if I made it <clears throat> like negative 400, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of talking, then it would be, <clears throat> geez, and then it would be there. Let me get some water. It would be there the whole time. As you can see. <clears throat> so keep that in mind. Let's say I wanted it to be animate. Wanted it to be animated. So on frame one, let's say I had it. Uh, what was it? Oh, geez. Was it 155? I think. Yeah. Okay. So I had it here. I'll copy that, and then frame 300. I'll put it at <clears throat> negative 300. And then let's see it in action. Frame 150. Gonna go there, frame 300, and then it's gonna go right back. Well, if this loads. Uh, it'll go right back. But you can see there, I don't know if you saw it, um, 290. There it in slow motion. So it was, uh, what was it, 400? 300? Yeah, 300. But it's gonna go beyond that. It's gonna go like 301, 302 even, 303. Why is it doing that? Um, Every model animation is going to have like this pendulum sort of effect. This is like where gravity is involved. I'm not sure how to disable it or if you even can. It's pretty annoying. So let's say I have to go, uh, where do you go? 3 to 10. Like, I don't want it there. I want to, I want it to go back at this point. So I will do negative 229 or something like that. And it's probably going to look a little choppy. It's okay, but I mean, the speed's a little off. So you have to finagle with that. And then there it goes again. It goes to that pendulum sort of effect. So you have to deal with that. That's pretty annoying and it'll take a lot more time than you uh, would expect to fix and correct. Well, that's how you would do that. And if I wanted it to speed up, of course, I'd go to frame 300 and let's say, you know, I wanted it to go 500. Now you'll go further, but in like half the time, it'll have to do that. Oh, I was going really fast. You know, it'll have to come back there even quicker. Oh, and yeah, now it's going crazy. Yeah, like models or model animation is just wacky. So let's say on frame 601, we set it, click the bone, we'll set it right back. Maybe that'll do it. Maybe that'll fix it. Let's see. I don't want to waste too much time here. Yeah, no, it's not. So now, like, for the, let's go half that. So frame uh, 450, was it? Let's say here, this will be the halfway point. So this should be like negative uh, 300, I guess. Or 250 would be the halfway point. So that might fix it. Looks like that actually worked. Yeah, so go there. Come on, this anticipation's killing me. Okay, and it's, yeah, you see how insane that pendulum effect is, that gravity is. So you'll have to go in there uh, frame by frame, excuse me, frame by frame and tweak that. It's pretty annoying, very time consuming, but oh, that's a uh, brawl crate currently. <laughs> um, let me think, next up, anything else, anything else? I could do sprite animation, animating sprites. So let's see, how do we get like this little spinny dude? Let's get so spinny. So I named him Spin, <laughs> very appropriate. And now this would be, where it moves and it doesn't move, just the sprite moves. So that would be over here in pattern. Yeah, goes and stuff. So you see, got those little animations going. Let's see how I did that. So over here, so that'll be these textures here. One A, one B, one C and D. And pay attention to the file format. Important, so I put that in 101. Oh yeah, and so, um, if I did, let's say, want to have an animated thing in um, in the battlefield one, excuse me, I would um, I could export my animations, and then I could either replace or oh, not there. I could oh, it doesn't have any. 
I could import my model animations. It'd be, it would be there if I didn't do it. And I could even merge them uh, in Brawl Crate, which is pretty awesome. This is actually very awesome. But only uh, model data 1, 2, and 101, for the most part, sometimes 0, sometimes 10, uh, can have animations. So that's very important. And you have multiple things animated in one um, model animation, as you can see here. There's a whole bunch of things here. So I have like all these three. They're quote unquote animated, even though they stay still, but they're all, all the bones are listed here. Bones are, hold on, the thing I didn't even mention. So bones, we have the parent bone, we have like, I guess the child bones, but all the child bones pay attention to the parent bone. So if I move the parent bone, it's gonna just apply to the whole thing. So for the most part, you just need to worry about the biggest bone. If um, if there is a model that has multiple things in it, you may have to you know adjust accordingly and mess around like that. Um, so texturing or excuse me, animating a three D sprite or animating a sprite. 3D sprite. So that's going to be in like, yeah, new. That'll be yeah, texture pattern, I believe. That's what it is. Yeah, it'll be a texture pattern. And then from there, I think it's like H. Yeah, it'll be uh, command, uh, control H, excuse me. I'll make a new node. And with a new node, I'll one texture, and we'll make, make a whole bunch more. Let me explain how I did that. So <clears throat> in one texture, it's going to have you know, multiple sprites and multiple uh, animations. So because ghosts and stuff is listed as 32 up here, I can change this to whatever I want, like 34, 32, oh, 32. And I have a loop. That's also important, which I can just do in this little drop down here. Uh, this, this name spin has to be associated with this. And, and notice the capitalization. So if this was lowercase, this was uh, lowercase s, this would have to be a lowercase s. And that could apply to a whole bunch of things. Bones as well. That's very, very important. And materials as well. Yeah, um, you know, textures. D capitalization, you got to keep that in track. May it might just be easier just to do everything lowercase. I don't know. I just happen to do that. Uh, it cause a lot of headaches. We can see here, you can view the texture, you can view the animation. And we can go here and adjust it. So um, between tra frames 24 and 32, it's going to be playing this uh, sprite. Between 16 and 24, it's going to be playing this one. 8 and 16, it's going to be playing this one. And we can see it like that. So if I wanted to redo it, I'll just do that. Um, 2, 3, I would just go Control N, rename 1A, 1B. Look at those, the naming convention, right? Yeah. Let's see, 1D. Over here, but it's gonna look like crap. <laughs> That's because the timing hasn't been set. So it was uh, 24, yeah, 16, 8. You see now, now it's pretty, yeah, pretty smooth. I'd say. I think you just do that. You have multiple um, patterns from why you saw I had two more in here earlier. But that's okay. Um, let me take a moment. Okay, next I'm gonna talk about collisions and animated collisions. So, as most of you should be familiar with Green Hill Zone, that has the animated uh, collision here. But collisions and models aren't necessarily tied together unless you do a specific thing. So let's go into that. <clears throat> um, go to collision, there's two here, but there might be more, might be less, depending on your stage. Not a big deal, doesn't make a difference. Might be a little more complicated. We have uh, main stage, and we have uh, this one here. The main stage, I'll go about this first. Now, you could just import um, Control R and just replace or export collision. And it's, you know, I could just export this, put it into the um, battlefield one, just replace the current one. I could do that. Um, you could also, let's say you're making a custom stage and you have to make your own collisions. So let's go over that. So I'll just select all that and delete it. You can just like the face. Okay. I'm going to press Alt and left click. I'm going to make a little um, uh, little floor there. I'm going to click, floor, 
everything. And material, uh, let's keep that as basic. Uh, material has to do with the noise the characters are going to make when they walk and run over the texture. Uh, now, yeah, about every Project M stage uses basic, which uh, is fine. But recently, there was a, like a breakthrough where okay, you can edit that here, where Super was able to. Where is it? It's one of these. Yeah, he was make, he was able to make it so you can view all the the data here. So the difference between the basic texture or dex, basic collision and a rock one, you see here, uh, jump speed, walk speed, uh, tumble, all of these are adjusted. Grass, soil, wood, all of these are different. You know, traction, all this list is here. And you can go in and adjust anything. So let's say I wanted rock, I couldn't. I don't think I can copy paste, but I can go zero. Maybe there's a way to actually adjust it. It's done. Yeah, different sound effects playing. Creates dust, walk around. Yeah, I believe there is a way to adjust it. I could have sworn I was able to do it earlier. Maybe? Maybe there's not? I could have sworn you could. Uh, well, yeah, keep your eyes peeled about that. I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, for the most part, you want basic. Um, where was I? <clears throat> so yeah, let's say well, this is basic. One is floor. Everything is gonna affect it. Um, not fall through. None of these. And then let's have a wall here. Let's make it a everything. It's gonna be left wall. You can do no wall jumps if you really want. And let's merge these. It's a little hard to view some of these sometimes. But you could, um, yeah, adjust the camera as well. So we want both ledges to snap together, which it might be a little tricky if they're too close. Yeah, you'll see what I mean in game. We're going to merge them. Now they're going to be one. Adjust that. Try to align it. Let's say the edge here. Just like that. And, you know, I'd want this to go like there. And then we want to snap or align the X. And we'll align the Y. So it's nice and flat. And to make sure no one falls through, we can do the same thing here. Come on. Pretty annoying now it's there. Everything basic. Want it here. And if, you're, if your stage is going to have curves or um, slopes, yeah, this is very important that you merge them, especially. Even if you don't, it's still pretty important. Merge that. I'm probably have to adjust that again. There's a whole bunch of redoing stuff and whatnot. Align the Y. Align the Y. Nice, nice and flat. You have more maybe walls, whatnot. Make it extend down. Now, for the important stuff, the big stuff, the animated, um, animated collision. Let's go here, and we can see... forgot about that guy. The collision is going to follow uh, this here. Now let's see why that is. Now what I could do is because the collision is not necessarily tied to the model and I could demonstrate that by just having to say I, I wanted a wall here or you know I got a wall here and it could it would literally follow the exact same path. But why it's not going to do that? Also, um, this is interesting. There's no everything there. Should be everything there. I guess items would fall through it then. Huh. Interesting. <clears throat> this is wood, oddly enough, but it's not too big of a deal. You can change it so somehow change it so run speed and walk speed and jump height isn't affected by uh, the material. Now uh, you can see here. It's associated with a bone. And so I could remove that. Oop. Oh, not that. What would I do? I didn't mean to do that. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. We'll go with that. I want a green hill. And it was die. Okay. 
Yeah, so that was the bone. Just, this is a leftover from the PM Green Hill. There's so much stuff as you see here. It's just a mess. So that'll be it. That's the model. That's the bone. Check it off. So now it'll follow that. Same for Smashville, some other custom page you may want to do. That'll be it. And now it'll follow it and do whatever it wants. Um, I think lessons. Okay, this is very simple stuff. The simple one. This is the stage parameters. Now th this stage parameters. Now this will be pretty much used for one purpose, and that's just to convert the brawl camera into the PM camera, which is just better in about every way. It's faster. It zooms out more, and it's just better. You could go in and adjust it yourself. A whole bunch of stuff here. You see, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, camera speed. That's the big one there. People say just set it to two PM camera. I think there's a few more things you need to do that people don't mention or maybe. So I would just export that, let's say from a PM stage and then import it into your new stage, which may not have a PM camera, let's say. Um, and there could be some differences, differences between the battlefield camera and the final destination camera and whatnot. So you may, you know, depending on what your stage looks like and how it is, go about it with that. Next, let's talk about um, Model data 100, which would be stage position. Let's talk about that. So preview that. WHD, nice and quick, a little too quick. Okay, stage position. We have a whole bunch of stuff here. We have um, where the camera is, um, where you die, where the ice climber final, final smash is, where item swan, the purple up there. Lucario's final smash. I, something about Pikmin, I'm not entirely sure about that one. Uh, where players spawn initially. Uh, Pokemon trainer, not that important. And where people respawn. Now some stages they're gonna spawn all in one spot. Some, like in Battlefield, they're all gonna spawn in different spots. Oh, I forgot about that. So you see like uh, player one, two, three, four. That's where they're gonna spawn respectively. This is where you know they're gonna spawn and respawn. Here we go. Blast zones and the camera. I'll just go here because a little more aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> oh jeez. So yeah, um, if you're making a new stage from scratch, I would definitely say keep the blast sounds in check. So you don't want a stage to be too big or too small, because you know depending on what you want it to do. But preferably for teams, preferably one you know, v ones or maybe both. You try to have an idea of what you want ahead of time, and then you wouldn't have to go back and tweak it. And save time. And I save time by doing that. I mean, <laughs> so yeah, you could just adjust anything you want. You could just let's say I want the blast sounds to be a little smaller for some reason. Uh, you know. Want to that I wanted one. This is gonna be. Oh, I don't know how that would work, but yeah, if I wanted to do you know, someone to die very quickly down there or whatever, item spawn where players spawn. I don't know why that one's red. You normally want them blue. Let's, let's fix that real quick. Let's see what's going on there. May not be a big deal. It's all listed as the same. Uh, Y translation. Very odd. Oh, wait, oh, 50. Oh, yeah, that's normal. Hmm, not sure. Should be fine though. But for the most part, you want them blue. But let's say I did want one of the players, let's say uh, player three, to to spawn on the platform. Well, I'll copy this. There's two of them for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. I might do with ice climbers. May not. Paste that. So that player three is going to spawn up here. But because it's an animated um, platform, I don't know. Character spawning on animated platforms, I've heard, are pretty janky, so keep that in mind. You may not work out super well. May. It might. So you can just do that, and it's just that simple. Yeah, this stuff's pretty easy to do, but it's important, nonetheless. Next, let's talk about vertex editing. Now, this is pretty advanced. This is what I'm not that good at, but I can do it. So let's say, uh, this was like like 40 minutes ago I mentioned this. Um, let me think where to, mention, where to go in specifically. Okay. Now let's say um, I really didn't like this sundial. Is that a good example? Yeah. Let's let's say that. Now it's all listed as one MDLO, unlike uh, in here. Like if it was some other stage, it might just be like sundial. I can just delete it. It might just be that simple, but in this case, it's not. I couldn't just delete the whole thing. So what I could do is go to the polygons of objects and look for the sundial. Might take a while. I could also do it in the preview and look for it exactly. There it is. Let's say, yeah, okay, this is actually it. I could delete it like that. But let's say I want the sundial, but not the whole sundial. I want like half the sundial for some reason. It's like distracting. 
What we do here, open this, open up vertices. May not go initially at first. Yeah, I'm actually going to close and reopen it, I think. Yeah. No, no, it's actually falling right. Right. Still not there. There it is now. See all these little green dots here? Now that's going to be them. Each one of those is a vertice. Vertice. So what we're going to do, um, have the bone select. So all these could be selected, so I have to be very careful and very gentle. I'm try not to select any at the same time. So I'm going to select these up here. I'm going to hear this. Oh, uh, yeah. Translation, rotation, scale, and I'm going to translate them. I'm going to look at move it. I'm doing this with the control, by the way. Control and just clicking, moving the camera. So I can move this anywhere I want. I can skew it, make it look terrible. I could, I don't know, do whatever I want. I can go higher, lower. This is a very, very important tool, which can be really hard to use and take a long time. This is going to be. I can't really think of any examples of when, like, you have to be really good at this to make it work. Uh, for the most part, you may not need to use it, but if you're doing more advanced things, you, you will need it. If you want to select, you know, part of a model but not the whole thing, and adjust it. You could, I think, do this stuff in like 3ds Max and whatnot. But you could also do it here if you really have to. <laughs> oh man, that looks terrible. But you know, as an example, like you could do anything with this. And if I move the model, now it'll move uh, like this whole thing. I'd have to go back if I wanted to. I'd have to go back and edit the vertices, which at this rate is looks pretty impossible to put it back to how it was. And I could very easily select too much. Like look at all those in the background, and just mess up the whole stage. Sometimes you can Control Z and undo it. Sometimes you can't. Just gotta get lucky, really. So just be very, very careful of that. Um, I think I kind of went over this. Like I didn't even ask me to save that or not. I just like it's probably just gonna do it. Yeah. So now I'll just remove the vertices. Um, I did briefly mention the scene data, which is the lighting. Um, and you can do stuff, stuff like sunsets and whatnot. Um, you can see here lights, different whole bunch of lights, you can make lights, different fog settings, um, whole bunch of stuff. There's, I don't know scene data that much. Different types of lighting and you can import and export lighting from different stages. Let's if I wanted this to look like, I don't know, metal cavern lighting, you know, nice and dark. I could do that. It might crash the game, might not. It might break the models here and I'll have to like go in and if you were taking notes. Um, go into the materials and right here, go into the materials and adjust Everything was it here? No, up here, you know, this is like set to two. That's set to that's two and two. I, I may have to adjust all that. I could easily break the stage, couldn't might not. Um oh another thing I didn't mention, uh shadows. This I think is the last thing. I'm a little tired. Ooh, a lot of speaking. Alright, um now shadows are gonna be done like this. Um well, as you can see here. So if I have this here, how do I make a shadow? I just do control D to duplicate. Edit materials, stages, convert to shadow. That's simple. That's it. <laughs> just about. Um, there is other ways to do it, but this is a newer way in Brawl Crate. It's just so simple. It's just so easy. Now you want the shadow to be a little bit above the stage. So keep that in mind. Like this is a you know one on one, one on one, one five fifteen, and this one is yeah, it's just a little bit above it in every way. Now you may have to do a little bit more and goose it up a bit, so like that or something or. Well, three, well, three. Just in case, there might be a little bit of flickering or whatnot. So just do that in case. And you can even view it. Um, yeah, you can see shadow is slightly above the stage, which is good. And you can even see the shadow is going to be all around the stage. So you may not want their shadow to be in the front or I don't know on the side for some reason. You could go in and adjust that. That's going to be it for shadows. It may have to be part of the animation layer. I'm not entirely sure. I do it in just a case. Well, hopefully you got that. Hopefully that was um decent tutorial. A lot to cover. My, my voice is kind of dying on me. but Hopefully you got that. Then you save it and test it out. A lot of testing. A lot of trial and error. Like Stage bonding is... I don't know. I feel like there's always an issue every time. There's always a new issue. So you always learn a little bit more. Hopefully that makes sense. And hopefully you enjoyed it and learned something new.
if not, you know, shoot me a message, ask questions, and I don't know, ask someone who knows more than I do. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for tuning in, and take care.